So I think every move counts in its really in its incubation period probably started in the 80s and I was frustrated looking at the students I had who were not making progress. I started going to look at the research and there was stuff there, you know, and I'd pull it out and I would try to figure out who does this apply to and how would I use it. And I was doing things that would work, but then I didn't know what to do next because there wasn't any kind of curriculum or any continuum. They were just isolated research projects. And we got a new occupational therapist that came on board. She was sensory integrative background as well as MDT. We started doing some co-treating and students who had languished with me for several years now started really making progress, which was exciting. Mm -hmm. And one day I went into her and I said, what would you think? I've got students that I've been rocking and swinging and I'm watching you and I'm wondering if you have ideas for me. And she said, well, did you mean vestibular specifically or sensory integrative in general? I had never heard all of those words in one sentence in my life. And so I looked at her and I said, oh, I'm real open, whatever you think. <laughs> so we started exploring co-treating, which mm -hmm. was not done then. You know, it was still mm -hmm. a pull-out model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We started co-treating. We started really getting some exciting results. Mm -hmm. Then I heard about Van Dyke and I started reading that and seeing how that impacted our students. And in my private practice, I had a speech with or a psychologist that came in one day and he said, you know, I thought you might be interested in this. And it was a request from NIH, from the Institute for the Neurologically and Communicatively Disordered, and it was a grant uh, proposal in this area. And it was about developing strategies mm -hmm. for this population. And I went into Dixie and I said, what do you think? You know, we've been talking about if we could, it would be so nice to quit and really try to capture what we're doing. And this is exactly six months. This is what we talked about. And I still remember she looked at me and she said, make a list of five things you want to do and you grow up and I'll make a list of five things I want to do. And if we match on something besides this, I'll do it with you. I made my list. I went in the next morning. We put them down. And top on both of our lists was tap dancing. <laughs> We figured if we could match on something that obscure, we had enough in common. Mm -hmm. We found a place, we took tap dancing two nights a week, and we wrote on this grant proposal two nights a week. We were funded, and the first phase was a six-month um, where we wrote what we called our skill packets. So we wrote what we knew with this student or that student. But when we finished, we realized that there were really pieces missing. And we started saying, wouldn't it be nice? if they would pay us to look a little deeper. And we applied for and were granted Phase 2 and Phase 3 funding. And we went into the research, we looked to see, we came out and tried to see how those pieces fit together. We went out, we had 107 students involved at the beginning of the project and they were public school setting, clinic setting, day programs, mm -hmm. residential facilities. And we went in, took the prototype manual in, and the staff there implemented, gave us feedback, collected the data. And I still remember that when we finished, all we wanted was to be able to go back to our students and better serve them. Right. We got all finished and I went to take a, a class on something. And in the class, the man came up and he said, what population do you work with? And I told him and he said, well, would you ever use this strategy? And I said, well, we just finished a project and everywhere it says this, this would be an appropriate strategy. I wouldn't use it with all of my students, mm -hmm. but everywhere it says this, I would do that. And he said, well, could I have a copy of that? And I said, well, absolutely. And about mm, three, four months later, I got a call from Corpus Christi, Texas, and the woman said, you know, do you do training? And I said, in what? <laughs> you know, I have no idea. And she said, well, I just got it. Someone gave me a copy of your manual, mm -hmm. your research project. And it was this man who had then gone down there and done training, and he told me later, the woman said, do you ever use these strategies with this kind of population? And he said, well, as a matter of fact, I just had a woman in the training, and she said, everywhere it says this, yes, mm -hmm. and he gave her the book. And so I had never done a training before, and I went down, and someone came over from another area, and then they said, will you come here, will you come here? Mm -hmm. And it just took on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. So it was really about an ability focus, mm -hmm. I don't care what somebody can't do, it really doesn't matter. It was about identifying the abilities and the interests because that's what takes all of us forward. And so looking at not the traditional kinds of assessment, 
because those give developmental scores which tell you not a thing. And it was looking at identifying interests and abilities and then how do you give that person the biggest bang for the buck on what those interests and abilities are.